Welcome to the Muxall Open IoT channel. I am your host, Michael Crane. Okay, so today we have a repair video. And uh, this is Ken's controller. Uh, he sent it to me because he said that it was uh, the temperature was running away and one of his pro meat probes died and and I already got rid of the pro meat probe. It was bad. And uh, and by the way, these pro meat probes I have custom made. And <laughs> and sometimes I guess soldering in here or whatever happens, I get, we get failures on this. I have to test every one of them before they leave. Um, so uh, but if you ever have a problem with them being flaky, flaky. Just uh, send it back to me and I'll replace it for free. Back to Ken. So anyway, <laughs> he sent it to me. He said the temperature was running away. Of course, you know, whenever someone sends me a controller, I'll plug it in and it'll work just fine. And it did. And uh, until I plugged in one of his, his working meat probes, it didn't work. And so I got two brand new meat probes and plugged them in. And it still didn't work. So, so I replaced... Let's see if you guys can see it here. Uh, so I basically replaced uh, ports one and two on this because it wasn't the meat probe that was bad. But the brand new meat probes weren't bad, but this one, port one, was kind of flaky. Port two, uh, or port one didn't hardly work at all. Port two was kind of flaky, so I went ahead and replaced them. And uh, repotted it and everything, and thought you know everything was going to be just fine. And when I plugged it in and tried using it, ta da! <laughs> the, uh, the inside temperature was working, but the outside temperature is dead. And I use this probe to test with all the time, it's just some. RTD I'd laying around and uh, yeah n and none of the meat probes were working so I plugged in probe one probe two and as you'll see in a minute well as you won't see in a minute it won't be working and I'll plug in probe three but probe three is actually uh, not configured to use a pro a pro port I'm sorry, a pro meat probe, so it's not a pro port, I guess, if you want to call it that. Yeah, there you go, so port port 3 works, and it's just configured, it's it's in its default configuration. So, it's very interesting, and I started to get into the debug port to see what was going on, but the chamber temp was working with no problem, so I, you know, before any I changed anything, so I looked at, at this, this uh, two-wire adapter right here, and uh, it seemed to be okay. I know my probe's good. I tested with it. My chamber temp probe was okay. And like I said, I started to get a debug port, see what was going on, but I really only started having problems with when I installed these guys. So I thought this would be kind of an interesting video. If we think about this, if, if this is zero and your ports are, if this is zero and your barbecue is running, Patsy, Patsy's going to think that <laughs> it needs to really dump a lot of fuel, right? And so you could get it running away. And I think what's going on is, is one of the brand new ports I installed, either I goofed it up installing it uh, or it's just bad. It just came back from the factory bad. So we're going to test that theory. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to power this thing off. I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to cut the wires off one of these and see if that fixes our chamber temp. Okay, so hold on for a sec. Uh, hopefully you can see that okay. So what I'm going to do is these are the two I replaced. Port 3 seems to be okay, right? Um, but I'm going to clip off the wires. I guess I'll just start with um, port 1 right here. Clip the wires off him, and then we'll plug it back in and see if that 
fixes our, our chamber temp probe problem. So, whoop, quick, go, whoop, and quick. All right, all the wires are clipped off. Make sure he's not touching any mains voltage. That would be really bad. Okay, so I'm going to flip them around now. We'll plug them back in. Okay, so we cut the, the wires off probe one right here. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. And turn her on. And these numbers, oh, check it out. <laughs> Look at that. I was just going to say, these numbers right here, these default to some, they initialize the variable with some fake numbers. And um, Anyway, so our outside temp works. Our chamber temp is now working. That's, that's good. Let's try port 2. Wow. Talk about getting lucky, huh? <laughs> if, we got, if we found the bad uh, probe, meat probe port right out of the box. Hey, look at that. Well, there you have it. Yeah, so I just have to replace this. So anyway, I'm going to replace the meat probe. I mean, sorry, the meat probe. I'm going to replace the meat probe. Oh! What happened here? It uh, stopped working. Alrighty. Well, that's a, that's a bummer. Yeah, so our chamber, our meat probe, port two works okay. Yeah, so it can take up to 30 seconds. I think, I, I forget what the scan rate is on these probe ports, but uh, it should have registered by now. Isn't that interesting? I tested these. Uh, oh, look, you see, it just went out again. Huh. Yeah, I don't, let me go get another. I doubt if it's a meat probes now. Now it's, now it's misbehaving on all of them. Anyway, I'll be back. Okay, so I've got a another bag of <laughs> uh, meat probes here, and we'll just pull one out of the bag and plug her in. Port two. I mean, surely I didn't get. Yeah, I'm starting to. Well, this might be more of an interesting uh, repair video than thought. So when these meat probes are are flaky. If you ever get a flaky one, uh, which I apologize, I, I'm going to have to fuss at the manufacturer about, about this, but it's usually in here, well it's almost always in there, and it's from, if you wiggle it around like this, that's what causes it to uh, stop reading. And I'll be, I'll be shocked if I have two of them, my, my, the failure rate on them has been about one out of twenty. So what is that, a 5% failure rate or something? But now it's increasing. <laughs> if these two are back, I just pulled these out of the bag the other day. Yeah, see that one seems to be okay. We'll let it sit for a few minutes. And we'll try to, because last time it was reading and all of a sudden it stopped. So we'll give it a few minutes here and make sure it's gonna be okay. Oh, sorry about the glare. I, I'm looking at a, there's a, gosh, I hope you guys can see that okay this whole time. Anyway, this one seems to be, be okay. Yeah, move it around, move it around, jiggle, 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 jiggle. I mean, they, you don't do a lot of this on the barbecue, but you don't want someone to walk by and knock it and have it stop reading. Well, that one looks pretty good. So we'll set him off to the side. I'm going to grab another brand new one since we're doing this and plug her in, let it reset to zero, okay, plug it in. By the way, I do test all these before 
I do. I'm sorry, you can't even see what I'm doing. I can't. I do test all these meat probes before I send them out, and I do the jiggle, jiggle, jiggle test on them, just like I was showing you, um, because I don't want people. You pay 20 bucks for a meat probe. I don't want to see them coming back. I jiggle, 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 so you can see it's reading now. Oh, you have to be careful when you're doing the jiggle test that you're not jiggling it out of the the port. Well, that's uh, that's not looking too good, is it? Yep. Man, I'll tell you. Okay, so we got three. Yeah, I'm gonna have to send some. Of these. I'm gonna send these back. Problem is, shipping them back to China where they're manufactured probably costs more than just buying new ones. Okay. Now I'm. Now I'm. There's no way we're having this kind of a failure rate. Yeah, see, this one works just fine. So, I, yeah, I don't know. Nothing different in the connectors. Okay, so as you can see, or so, so you will see, um, everything is working good now. I'll give it a minute. There you go. That's pretty good, huh? It wasn't the jacks. And so, uh, so I'm going to show you <laughs> what I found. It was actually kind of interesting because it took me a little bit to find it out. I was really scratching my head with this. I was like, I don't, I don't understand, you know, what's going on with this. So I went ahead and pulled port one out. And if you remember, port one is the one that when I clipped it off, it, the uh, chamber temp started working again. And I started looking at it, and if you can see, I'll try not to get my big fat head in the way of the shot, but if you can see right 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 there there's a shiny kind of copper looking uh, piece right there and that's actually um, the, a trace that's around that this connector right here the manufacturer builds it it's a he, they're supposed to let me see if I can get an board here they're supposed to uh, pull the traces back. Looks like it's a ground plane. I'd have to look at the drawing. I'm, I'm looking at it myself. But they're supposed to pull that flood fill in or that ground in right there away from the hole. I forget how many millimeters but and it looks like it's done pretty much everywhere except for Except for a couple of them. Sorry, I'm looking at it myself. I, I know you guys can't see, but um, it'd probably be best to get out of my. Anyway, long story short is, is there's a defect in the PCB. So the button panel actually has a defect. And, and what was happening is it was such a small. Oop, you guys can't see anything now, can you? Hold on for a sec. Let me readjust everything. Okay, we're back. So anyway, that was such a small little defect in that PCB that that this thing, this is one of the jacks right there. It was just, it was just barely, barely touching it. And of course, I didn't even notice it. It's it's microscopic almost, and but it was just enough to cause problems. And I guess the more I messed around with the jack, the the more it probably popped up. And that's why, you know, when we first assembled it, there was nothing. Check everything. Everything passed. But then, as you know, the user started using it, it kept getting worse and worse. And when he shipped it back to me and I tested it, I was like, "Wow, what's wrong with this thing?" And uh, and as you saw, I was doing what you saw it do with me. You probably have figured out what the fix is, and you would be right. It is a tiny teensy tiny little washer 
that will go on the back side of this it would actually uh, insulate the jack from the PCB and, and that would be it right and I, I guess next time when I redesign this I'll probably change it my drawing to make more room for this guy right here so that's it yeah that, that's a simple it's a simple fix <laughs> just a, a simple washer uh, insulating washer but anyway I uh, I asked Ken what he wanted if he wanted me to fix this or or want a new one and and he left it up to me and so I'm building him a new one because uh, you know it's, who wants to buy a controller a brand new controller that has a, uh, a defect in the PCB you know and so you know I, I try to put myself in the customer's shoes what would I want and, and I want a brand new controller so anyway uh, I'll get this one fixed probably sell it for you know, at a discount to uh, somebody who is looking for a controller. Anyway, that's it. So, uh, yeah, that was kind of an interesting uh, repair video. <laughs> it was an interesting repair. It took, took me a little bit to uh, actually find it. So, anyway, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments uh, under the video. And, uh, and I'll talk to you guys later. Don't forget... You can support the Muxall Open IoT channel by donation using a credit card and PayPal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up, that helps, and hit the subscribe button, that really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.